a non-Indian wedding where I've given like thirty dollars, and that's okay. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, is that thirty dollars? Thirty dollars, my boy. <laughs> what the fuck are they gonna do with thirty dollars? Have a dinner? <laughs> And we're back. Brown Mondays here. Lokish, Hummer, Bubba. And today we're going to talk about a topic that everyone's very well aware of. We're going to talk about weddings. Indian weddings. <laughs> Indian weddings. And not only that, but I've curated a list of topics regarding weddings, specifically South Asian weddings. Uh, that some don't, my friends don't even know. So we'll be picking from here and answering them. I think I think this is a good topic to kind of talk about that we're talking about weddings, specifically Indian and brown weddings, Desi weddings, because a lot of people in America kind of like value Indian weddings or like put them on a pedestal compared to other weddings because it's like, oh, you're going to an Indian wedding? That means so much more than compared to like, oh, you're just going to a run of the mill white ass wedding, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, there's a preconceived notion, I think, when they talk about brown weddings. Uh, what's like a one I've heard? Oh, just everyone get to wear beautiful jasmine outfits and ride on horses and the elephant. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's let's, right. let's pull up from the from the list. So who's gonna go first? Go ahead. Let's go. Let's start with you. All right. Do I maybe you just maybe you just reach for one. <laughs> One. My boy need a long reach. <laughs> he needs one of those like pickers that go like I'm, pickers. I'm short, I can't help it, all right. <laughs> all right. How much do you give at Indian weddings? Mm. Hashtag no box gifts. <laughs> so this is this has been a contending topic for a lot of people that go to weddings. Like XO Nick. One hundred and one dollars. <laughs> Why the one? <laughs> it's for good luck. That good luck. It's that one extra good dollar luck. for good luck. So I've heard that you don't put a zero at the end because you don't want the money to fall out at the end. So you yeah. you want to replace that zero with a one so it stops the rest of the money from falling out. Is it? That's the thing. <laughs> that, that, that's what my I mom told me. Yeah, I think I've heard that. But yeah. isn't zero like never ending? So it's just like one hundred, but zero doesn't stop. Or I don't know. I don't know. Zero but zero is like a hole. Yeah, I see. And then what you do with that hole is up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I do. With it. <laughs> if someone gave me a hundo, I'd still be happy. I'm like, alright, thanks. So I, I think it just depends on what kind of wedding you're going to. Is it a family wedding, or is it? a friend wedding or is it someone that you kind of know and kind of acquaintance to and you happen to be at their wedding or you were invited last minute? When we were younger going to weddings, I remember we, my friends and I, we would talk in a circle at the reception like, so what are you guys all giving and trying to figure it out? Nah, I'm like, whatever, I'll just give the exact same amount all the time. But I guess it also makes an effect. I've been to like a non-Indian wedding where I've given like $30 and that's okay. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, is that, is that right? $30? $30, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are they gonna do with $30? Have a dinner? <laughs> I, I, someone told me, I asked other people there and they said, that's what you give. I'm like, okay, I'm like, I guess I'm saving some money on this wedding. But yeah, I gave $30. This is a long time ago, but. Uh, yeah, that, sh that shit don't pay for your plate, bro. <laughs> That's the other you know, thing, right? You, like, you give you money give as much to pay for your plate. Yeah, you gotta, it's gotta like be to justify you being there. On the right? allocation yeah. of what the plate costs, at, you know, the food. But I mean, yeah. then there should be a lot more because I mean, some places if you go travel for a wedding and you're gonna go somewhere, then I'm sure that plate costs a lot more than- 100%. If you had one day wedding or something. Yeah, yeah, I think I think for me, like when it, in terms of, you know, how much to give um, when, it, when it's family and they say no box gifts, I still give something, you know, it, I don't give cash, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I know they have cash, you know, everybody can make money, you know, but when it comes to family, you want to give them something memorable. That's why I try to do something for their house or, you know, some, some type of gift. But when it's friends, 151 standard, no matter who it is, if I'm mm -hmm. going to your wedding, 151 standard. Yeah. I feel, so. I feel like, especially cause I was talking to some other people about it. They're like, like sometimes I give 101, sometimes I get 151 or if I really like, know them and they're my really close friends even if it's not like a box gift it'll be like 201 or something like that because yeah, like yeah. 
two people, 201. Right. If you're a groomsman, maybe it changes a little bit more, you give some more, versus if you're just an acquaintance and you went there, you right. went to one event instead of all the events, maybe Bro, you just went to the reception. I, I paid for all my groomsmen's outfits, all right? They can, get more, they can get more than that shit. <laughs> or you just have a really nice registry filled with great <laughs> gifts and items on there. You like, know how much that shit costs, bro? <laughs> going to India, getting tailor-made <laughs> outfits for all of your groomsmen, right, to look fresh for your wedding. You know? That's expensive. So yeah, give me a gift. That's, that's, why, the, that's why the man put an uni on his register. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this guy put an uni on his register? Yeah, I got it. Oh, did you Who it? gave it to did you? you? Who gave you the uni? <laughs> one, of, one of my wife's doc, uh, dad's doctor friends. Oh, oh there yeah. you go. Yeah, you know? good, 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 good. I gotta put it on I mean, there. You, don't, you try. You don't receive if you don't ask. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Nice. Good, but but yeah, I'm like, yeah, even to go to India and get those outfits, when I went over there, I went to like four or five different like shops over there and I'm like, I need the same six outfits. And they said, these six outfits, the same? I don't think we have that many in the back. So I had to go different places and they're like, and one, one guy came up to me, he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, you want to the groom's boys? <laughs> I'm like, I guess you could call them groom's boys. But he's like, he's like, yeah, when I go, a lot of clients I have go to America and they sent me pictures of the outfits. So we can have that tailor-made for you and we have all specific outfits for you. So I got those specifically tailor-made and I'm like, I better get more than $101, you assholes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. That was a lot more. There was Anish the one telling us about like sending measurements off. Like everyone will give you the measurements, right? You do the cards mm -hmm. and this and that, Color, yeah. and then you send it off. And then Anish was like telling us in India, like the 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 the, the, the tailor was like, Anawe. <laughs> They're like, and he's like, it is. That's just like, you got some like whales for friends or something. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like, just because it's not our size in India doesn't mean it's people aren't like that anywhere else. I probably got some yeah, broad man. shoulders. Did you, like, I had, I had like this, um, this is one uh, tailor in India, right, that uh, my boy Jutton told me about. Um, it's called uh, Sachin's Men's Warehouse. So I went there and they gave me a PDF file and, I, and it's like a size chart. And I gave that to all my boys. The craziest thing was, right, the 12 groomsmen that I had, Every single person was doing that shit differently. Some people had centimeters, some people had inches, you know, when they're doing their whole body weights, you know, like all their sizes. And when I sent it to India, this dude was hella confused, Yeah, you know? So when, when we got the outfits, I mean, shit, make it fit. Yeah. What can you do? Make it fit. <laughs> that's what, make it work. That's the guy what, was like, a, I just, like, <laughs> that shit work. Like, like, Trying to pull it down. I, so I, I, I sent all my boys Google Forms to, for them yeah. to fill out. So like yeah. kind of how they figure out. But even then, it was still all screwed up. Yeah. So I had to look at it and be like, no, they're actually my size or bigger. And that's kind of how, like, even in India, if you show them a picture of how they look, they're like, oh, they're this size. So they can tell immediately. <laughs> yeah. They've done it for so they long. Get so that long. That's why clothes are made in India. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, let's bring out the next, the next one. Let's go on, let's move on. This is maybe a good one. I wonder who wrote this one. Your ass wrote all of them. Yeah, I would write this one. I would get this one. White people perspective of Bollywood weddings. Oh, no, we already started talking about we this. Kinda, we kind of talked, talked, talked about it, right? We haven't touched upon it. We touched on it. Yeah. We can, we can I mean, talk more I, about I, it. I think they, they realize that it's such a, it, there's like this whole, you know, romantic, beautiful thing about because it's usually three or four days long. Uh, if you're really, really rich in India, then it's usually way longer. Um, but I think they get to see that and it's not just like one day or half evening event. And uh, yeah, they, they've asked some stupid ass questions where they're like, do you get an elephant? I'm like, no, bitch, this is not the circus. Like, we, <laughs> I've seen an elephant like one time. Did you, did you have a genie? Did you have a magic card? And I saw in the news, like these elephants aren't like happy about it. Like one of them went on a stampede. I'm like, I'm not getting an elephant for anybody. You know, yeah. But, um, I'm, like, I'm like, there's some pretty non-negotiables for anybody. Yeah. Obviously you gotta have a dope ass DJ. You gotta have- Food, food gotta be on point. Food gotta yeah. be on point. If, if, the food isn't right and the music nothing is right. Else matters. Nothing, nothing, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. No one gives a shit to come to your wedding if you don't. Yeah. So you have to make sure the food is on point. You got to go to the tastings. You have to like basically give your fit flavor profile to whoever your caterer is. When I go to weddings and I see like that one token white person or black person there, I like wonder, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, does this fulfill what you thought it was gonna be? Cause I'm like, I'm, I usually rate it. I'll judge I if see. this is a terrible wedding or, or not. I'm like, I wonder what they think about it right now. Like, I, I agree with you in that aspect that you put in all that, this effort and you want to entertain your guests. So the people who normally wouldn't go to these kind of weddings in America, it's possible for you to go to Indian weddings and you want to make it the best event you have. Now, if you go to shitty, if you put on a shitty event, then they're going to, 
forever, like maybe this may be the only Indian wedding they ever go to in their life. Facts. Yeah. They're gonna associate that with every other it, Indian wedding, right? It might not even be someone at the wedding. One of the best weddings I went to was just a few weeks ago. Me and, me and Bianca went to Mexico and so I'll tell you a horrible scenario that happened. It was like, uh, it was during the bottom that everyone was like dancing and there's like this like token, like European dude, really, really jacked. Just, he saw it, maybe he was like an influencer or something and he thought it'd be really cool to just jump in the bottom and just try to take a selfie with everyone like this. Oh, so and like, so he always, wasn't even like invited to the wedding. He wasn't even invited to the wedding, wedding right? Oh, the guy was like shirtless, was just a random, like, like yeah, jumping in. Jumping in and like everyone's like, they're staring at the guy and they're like, they're like, dude, this is a private event. Like, Get out of here. And the guy's like, what are you talking about? I just wanted to get a selfie with everybody. Like he, he felt like he wasn't in the wrong. Uh, and like all these big dudes were like, dude, you need to walk off like right now. Was it now. like an argument? <laughs> yeah, it was, it got pretty heated. Got like pretty I thought heated. they were gonna like start swinging. And the guy was like, then he walked off and he started walking back in. And like, I'm like, man, this guy's really gonna kill the mood here at the bottom. <laughs> or he's about to get stopped by all these dudes <laughs> one or the other. But then luckily nothing happened. And then he left. And then the wedding happened like on the beach, which was nice because that could go either one of two ways. It's like, it could be yeah, a terrible event cool. if it's not it's covered. It's a hit or miss, bro. 50-50. 50-50. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 50, they had, the, all the sand coverings were covered, so nobody walked on yeah, sand. That sounds beautiful. Everyone mm. sat underneath it. There was a breeze. There was a covering, so no one got hit with the, the sand. And then, like, there were very beautiful women out in the corner, like, bikinis watching the whole event. And I'm like, this is nice. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope this fulfills their uh, their ideas of what a Bollywood this wedding is. This is Indian wedding. This is it. This is it. I'll tolerate the Indian wedding for everyone else that's here. You know? Yeah, I think I think like you know like people who are non desi and they come to Indian weddings. I think they have one or two experiences, right? The first one is going to be like, wow, this was so vibrant. It was so colorful. It was so beautiful. The food was amazing. This shit lasted three days. I'm tired. I took PTO. You know. So you know pros and cons. Yeah. There with that, was this with your right? PTO? So the, the, the other option is like, this is just too much. Why would you do this, right? And those are, in my opinion, the non desis that are woke. They understand this shit is kind of crazy. You know, you're doing this for three days. You're spending all this money to do something that yes, it's a memorable experience, yep. but is it worth it? Yeah. That's the question. Is it worth it? Who are you doing it for? That's true. Yeah, yeah. Right. But if they're getting drinks in constantly, they think it's worth it. Hey, nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, nobody gives a fuck. It's an open, 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 open bar all weekend, baby. It's an open bar. That was a, <laughs> that could backfire in real day. quickly at people's yeah. weddings when there's an open bar. Anyway, we'll t we'll talk about that later. But yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, like whether you're white, black, whatever non-Indian race you are at the wedding, even you're Indian and you're whitewashed and you never experienced this kind of stuff before. This but, is an experience of a lifetime and people equate it to that. Like yeah. you, you have a certain expectation and if it doesn't make that expectation, what the hell are Indian weddings? hundred percent. And like, just, just to add on real quick before we move to the next topic, um, my, my wife's cousin, sister's husband, right? So I guess he's like wife's my, my cousin's cousin sister's sister. husband. Okay, gotcha. Right? So I guess he's kind of like my brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, you know, kind of. So he's Italian, right? So he got married to a Gujarati girl and their wedding was in Mexico. If I've ever seen a groom be more excited in my life, like, I mean, this guy was, he wanted to know about the culture. He wanted to right. know about what the ceremonies mean. He was with the Maharaj and like trying to understand every single thing. What does Kanyadan mean? What is, you know, like yeah. what are these feras? Like he was into it. And then you look and you see his family, they're just taking shots, you know? <laughs> or like, you you, you know, you, you see like half of them interested, but he was, he was more interested than the people who were Indian. You know, yeah. so when you do see that, that's also a beautiful thing as well. Yeah, yeah. put effort in. <clears throat> yeah. And then get fucking wasted. <laughs> I, got, I got really wasted at your wedding. Well, later let's talk about your wedding. Yeah. That was, uh, <laughs> there's some love hate there. Mostly love. Whew. This is a really good one, actually. Um, so this one is guest list. Who do you invite? Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna kick this off, man. <laughs> okay, so. I think there are tiers. Obviously, you invite your family. Family is a given. So you have X number of people. Some people have 100 people in their family. You already have 100 people at your wedding at that point. Like, white people, they're like, oh, you, I'm only gonna keep it to 80 to 100 people max. I'm like, bro, that's my family. That doesn't even get one gone, bro. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, guess this comes in tiers. So you have your, your family, obviously those are people are coming, and then you have your best friends and groomsmen. And then everything after that is kind of like a little muddled, like who you want to invite, where you want to invite it, and what you want to 
do you invite them now, later? Do you push it off? Do you like, like what kind of tiers are you placing them in? Like A, B, 1A, 1B, I don't, like, how do you decide at that point? <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of it's also political, right? It's, it's a lot of it's for your family. Like if you go to India and have weddings, it's they're inviting the whole town because they, they have to. There's not a, a question about it. You're gonna have people you don't even never have seen in your life at your wedding. And for me, I got married during COVID, like the middle of it, so I couldn't have legally more than 40 people. Which to me, I'm like, this that's is great. great. Yeah, that's great. great. You think it's great? That's a blessing. Well, you are. You want your normal people, way, your, yeah. your, your closest people. But the problem with that is, then all the immediate family it gets upset because they're like, now we can't invite people. Yeah. Now they're, how they're gonna feel about it. So it's still tense. It wasn't <laughs> easy. <laughs> Correct. Right. So that's the other problem. It's like you can do that, but it, that that wasn't easy by any means because there's a bunch of people you had to cut out, and those people aren't gonna necessarily understand that. There's a global epidemic here that you just can't do it. Like you had to count forty plus the caterers. That's a good one. It's not me. It's the CDC. I'm gonna use that sideways again. Uh, you're like you're like, damn it! I wanted to fucking mask off. I really wanted to, but I couldn't do it. But yeah. like, how did like at that point you're pissing people off because you're not inviting them to your wedding? Yeah. Because you can't. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it was nice. No, for sure, for sure. I mean, like both both of your perspectives are great. Um, I, I think like for me, right? Like if I could do it all over again, right? So I got married in 2019. So it was prior to the pandemic. Um, going on five years now. Shout out to my wife, love you, baby girl. So I hate this guy. <laughs> No, but um, um, you know, on the real, like, um, you know, like, it, you know, I had 550 people at my wedding. It was in Orlando, Florida. And, um, you know, a, a lot That's of it, lot. there was there was a lot of family pressure, you know, especially from my side compared to my wife's side. Like a lot of her family, um, you know, she does have a couple family in the States, but a lot of them are in UK. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, and, and like all my family was India, Chicago, New York. And for my dad, it was like, OK, we're we're doing something now. This is. This is my son's wedding means it's my event, yeah. you know, type of thing. So yeah. that I mean, I, and I'm sure a lot of people go through that, you know, when they're when they're going through their wedding process, especially when they're throwing it at that level. Um, but it, it definitely was frustrating, you know, <laughs> at, at times. But um, I'll be at weddings know. and I see these huge grand door weddings yeah. and I'm just like, hope this lasts. Like that's a lot of money down yeah. the drain yeah. if this no, doesn't. For sure. <laughs> For sure. You if know, you look at the statistics, I'm like, man, this is a lot of money that no, this hotel made. And, 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 that's, and that's a huge thing, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have to make sure the ROI is there, right? And like, I don't think the parents always know what the ROI is, right? <laughs> they, they only know what it is for them, you know, because they're checking off a box. But regardless, um, in terms of like, when it comes to friend circle, right? Like who to invite, like your parents are gonna invite people. Um, one thing that I heard a couple weeks ago at my cousin's wedding was, she said, every single person that I invited that my parents wanted to invite, I made sure that I had some type of relationship with them. And I was like, how are you able to do that? She had 350 people at her wedding. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, your, your pops is one of the most popular people in Tampa. There's no way that you can yeah. have 350 people, you know? And she said, she, she specifically said, I made sure that I had some type of relationship and some type of connection with them for them to come. I can't say I did the same, right? you know, because I was trying to ch check a box and make my parents happy as well. When it comes to friends, you invite who you're close with at the time. Five years later, that's true. Are they still here? Right. If, you know? if I haven't talked to you in a year, I'm probably not going to invite. I'm probably you not going to yeah, yeah. invite you to my wedding. Yeah. But I agree with you. I'm like, I agree with with her in that instance too. If I don't have, a, like, if I haven't been invested or talked to my my parents' friends at that time period, why why would I want to invite you to the wedding? It's tough because yeah. your parents are like, these are my best friends. I'm like, if they're your best friends, then I would have been around. They would make an effort with me. Right? And then they're gonna pull that me. awkward thing yeah. at the wedding tomorrow. Could you? I'm like, I'm yeah. like, no, <laughs> I've never seen you in my life. What are you doing in my wedding? I met you when you were this little. You better have $151. It'll be $151 check on this table. You know? <laughs> but at that point, you're just doing it to placate them, make them happy. Because if they're look and if they're helping fund the wedding too, you're like, oh shit. That kind of puts you in a bind. Where you're it like, puts you in a bind. If you're like, yeah. at the end of the day, if your wedding's funded by all your guests, I guess it don't really matter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, calculate sure. it that way. And then I don't know if you guys had this experience, but I mean, you know, I'll say, it. you know, like a lot of people, um, you know, who who are on the guest list, right? Like you're not as close to anymore, right? So you realize yeah. at that time you were you're young. 
you know? Mm-hmm. So you're only thinking about the bottle open on your keychain, right? You're only looking for the good times. You're not looking for who's there for me long-term, you know, longevity, yeah. who's, who's my brother, mm-hmm. you know, type of thing. That's true. So, I mean, yeah, you gotta really be careful who you select. So you fuck know? all them other bitches, we don't like you anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go to the next topic. Uh, do you like dancing at events or hate it? Mm. So this, this yeah, I 50, mean, 50. we talk about events and also like weddings in general. I love it. I fucking go all <laughs> out at weddings. I'm assuming that the question is in regards to doing group recited dances. Oh, okay. Not like dancing at receptions. It's more so do you want to dance at the Sangeet because you've got to do that because you're- Yeah, he's not talking about just dancing well, at the reception. Oh, just dancing at the reception. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like that part? <laughs> well, I think like coordinated dancing is tough in itself for a lot of other people. Like, like if you're not a naturally a dancer yeah. or you don't naturally do coordinated dancing, it's kind of a burden to that person. Like you're like, yeah. you're like, oh shit, now I have another responsibility yeah. that I didn't even think about before. You're like, they they graciously made me their grooms and their bridesmen, or I'm a cousin of the wedding. And a lot of this shit happens like, Honestly, to, to all the white people listening, if you have like friends and stuff like that, you know that non desi people, non desi people, non desi people, people. people. <laughs> and white people too. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly white people. <laughs> but, but if you have like any friends, I know you kind of like. I sent the video. My brother sent the videos to my 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 groom's friends like two months beforehand, and they practice. I gotta give it to them. They practice day in and Dude, day they were out. fire. They, they were practice, fire. Yeah. They were next level. But yeah. most groomsmen don't practice to the no, day of don't. the yeah. event. And so two or three days before. And if it's like yeah. a non-DC person, they'll do the best job because they take it seriously. They're yeah. gonna dance like mm. their butt off. And they're I mean, usually they the same person. assignment. For sure. Exactly. Yeah. They're like, hey, we're not gonna look like a fool. And but, but for my cousin's wedding, I show up like two days for the pre-wedding event. That's when I'm practicing. Yeah. And that's when you do your dancing. So it's like, you ha- kind of have to weigh like, yeah, I have to do it for my, my family's wedding, but also you kind of want to because they kind of show the same effort at and your wedding. Yeah, <laughs> so. true. I hate it, dude. I hate it. So it's a burden to me for sure. Burden. Like, I hate it. Like I, I told my friends, this is recycled college chashma. How many times? The exact, <laughs> exact same <laughs> dance over and over again. Do the dude, same exact dance. same dance <laughs> over and over again. We're, we're good, man. I hate it. I hope I never have to do it. I, every time, yeah, well, I'm married to a dancer, right? She'll just go, I'll teach you. And she teaches it to me in a very like profound way. When you learn dancing, it's usually the fill, fill in words. It's like, put it in the oven. It. Like you like have to fill in words so you can memorize it. Yeah, yeah. So she'll do that. I just looks like an idiot trying to dance and then I usually kill it in the dance I mean you kill I it at my I wedding do it. I just don't like doing it I kill it it's not that I don't can't kill it it's just yeah. I don't hate, hate doing it it's an extra responsibility at that right. point 100% I would say for me it's a burden as well like compared to doing a speech or compared to doing a dance I'll do a speech all day <laughs> all day you know all day but when it comes to the dance it's always it's always like that extra pressure, right? I feel the anxiety. I'm definitely no natural dancer whatsoever. I probably have two left feet, you know, but, um, and then that's how it usually is. Like you practice. You look like Magic Mike right now, so I thought you could probably pull it off. I mean, I feel like you give off dancer vibes. I feel like you probably could. No, it's a facade, dog. It's all Dirty, optics. dirty dancer. <laughs> it's optics, man. But um, no, man, like, um, I think like, you know, when you go to a lot of weddings, you're just like, okay, another dance I gotta do, shit. And then like randomly, you'll get pulled into like a cousin's dance or like, yeah. you know, like some random dances. Like I'm doing three dances. I thought I was gonna be here for one day. <laughs> you know, like I, I missed the Garba night already in the Sagit. <laughs> right. I'm doing three dances at the reception. What just happened, right? And you're yeah. learning it the night before, the day before. Right? And some people have like, what is it? They don't have Garbas, but they have like, um, what's Welcome that? dinners. Yeah, like whatever. Yeah, they have like, like uh, yeah. Sangeet nights or whatever. Sangeet welcome dinners. Yeah, and I'm like, People do dances for those and the reception. Yeah, dude. Well, usually nowadays, you're, mostly dances are, are saved for the sangeet because they don't want to add speeches and dances to the reception. So usually the receptions are meant for just like the, the groom and bride's dance and usually speeches. And yeah. They just cut out the dance. That's why they'll use sangeets. But also the thing about sangeets, a lot of non gujas will do it. But then there's good there, they'll still bust out their butt. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, 100%, right? Sunday right? so don't come out. Hey, yeah. Look, if we're not doing garbo, then what the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> if we're not doing garbo, what the fuck are we what doing? What the here? fuck are we doing here? All right, doli da do, let's go. <laughs> All right, let's, let's move on to the next question. Who's next? You. Me? All right. <laughs> What's the worst slash cringiest thing you've seen at a wedding slash reception? 
<laughs> people on blast now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it about us or not? Uh, I, mean, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I guess it could be either or. I never. I might talk about myself. Because <laughs> I could just talk on and on and on. Let's so, see here. Well, I've heard. I've heard the wedding I've been to recently where um, the the brother and the sister of the groom kind of said that um, that the groom kind of how do I say this politically correct that um, he kind of coerced the bride into marrying him. You said it out loud. Yeah. Like at the like the speech at the reception. <laughs> but so you say, like, I'm sorry. You said the brother and the sister of, of the, the groom of the groom. Yeah. Said that he coerced caressed the bride. Co coerced. Co coerced. Co coerced. Caressed would be yeah. a little, yeah. maybe I mean, both. I mean, maybe did both. Did that too. <laughs> did both. Did that too. He kind of coerced the bride, and I'm like, I'm like, should you be fucking saying this? To all these people at the event, and I'm like, and I'm like, it's probably even wrong because when he heard that, they said that he like, he he was like almost bawling, because he's like, like he, he he like he was tearing up. He's like, that's you can see on his face that he's like disgusted. He's like, that's not what happened, and you guys are twisting the story because that's his family. Yeah, they thought they were joking with him when they said <clears> that, and I was like, maybe he's sensitive. And I'm, but but I mean he. He is sensitive, but you don't kind of joke don't about that kind of you don't joke story. about like things like that. And I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, I was sitting, sitting in my seat. I'm like, uh, in my seat. And I'm like, I need another drink right now. Was like, was everybody cringing around? Yeah, like, like that was the energy in the room. Yeah, that was the energy in the room. And I'm like, they better yeah. switch shit up. Yeah, they gotta change topics. Yeah. And then you hear the the, the MC in the background. Okay, so the next feature. <laughs> <laughs> A and veteran like, professional. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like he's like reading the vibe in the room. He's like, yeah, this is. <laughs> he's, like, he's like he's like we can't talk about that kind of stuff. And why would you bring that shit up? Dude, I mean, like, yeah, I think that's just weird. Like, if if you're a family member, don't don't do that shit. Yeah, like, just don't fucking do like, it. Family like, that keep your family shit to yourself. Unless he hated him, yeah. he's like, I'm gonna use this one right now. Yeah. For him. I'm like, man, that's that's bogus. I'm like, ooh, you're gonna say this about, he's getting married, he's getting fucking married. I mean, he's already married at this point, but like, she could turn around and be like, nah, I'm headed out, sorry, peace like out, in, guys. Like in Bollywood movies. I'm trying to think of, oh, I got one. <laughs> Two years ago, we went to a wedding in Puerto Rico. It was a fun wedding, really, really fun. Like one of the top three weddings I've been to. And uh, Damn. the night you've of the, been to a lot, bro. You've been to a lot, been of, to a lot of weddings. <laughs> the <laughs> night of the yeah, this is the people that really made it there. Like it was like yeah. a it was like a Project X like wedding. Everything you should think oh, of that was at that wedding, and it was at the reception. It was music was going crazy. It was a banger. The DJ was doing a great job. There was a lady there that was married, and she's probably in her early forties. Um, she went up to the podium where the DJ was spinning at, and just started making out with the DJ. Mind you, she's married and her husband's there, and everybody in the reception's looking at them. So and the DJ spit. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> like, like he was like caught off guard. He didn't know at the time, right, who the, this girl is. I mean, he didn't know the girl is. Yeah, so he was just he's just so made he's out. Just making out with. He was made out with this married lady. This is a Desi wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Desi DJ. Yeah. A Desi I think the DJ. Yeah. 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 Married woman. I don't know if you had a kid, the kid was even there or not, saying, but uh, that's, that's a first. Never so heard like, shit like that. I was like, I really wanted to know next day what happened because like everybody knew, like the husband was there, like everyone saw it happen. But I never got the rest of the details. Did I he was, stop spinning? No, no, no I, how was he gonna he stop? No, he, he kept it going. He put her on autopilot and he just kept it moving. <laughs> they made out for a few minutes and then like she took off and then like, cause someone eventually pulled her out like, what are you doing? It's yeah. like, hey, get your shit together right now. All the mutuals at that wedding, they're hitting up their DJ friends, be like, hey, if you want to make out with someone, I don't want to do that. It was a Punjabi and a Gujarati wedding. So, you know, those were always getting wild. Oh, so sheesh. <laughs> I'm trying to forget. I'm trying to remember if she was Punjabi or if she was Gujarati. I don't remember. Man, then I did that for no reason. <laughs> I sure it was Gujarati. That was good, though. It was good. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Brah! <laughs> <laughs> But like, bra, give me, give me your bra. It's all being your mouth like this. <laughs> 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 I hope, 
I hope they're still together, man. I hope they didn't get a divorce after. Hope for the best with the bride. Honestly, like that, that is the first. Like, I've been to a lot of weddings as well. That is the first I've ever heard of something like that happening at a wedding. Not only, I mean, like, I can definitely get it from the fe from the female side, right? Um, even though that's fucking absolutely unacceptable and crazy. But from the DJ side, it's like, dude, you're here to do a job. Like, you no. need to be professional. What are you doing making out with this random person? Like, have you never kissed? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. okay, it so was not a professional for the DJ. Sure the DJ had some drinks in him, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so many okay. questions, you know? Yeah, but anyways. I'm sure it happens. It's just like, why would you do it in like in front of like 500 yeah. people? I mean, I've seen that happen in college. Yeah. Where people are making out with the DJ and yeah. stuff like that. But like, you're also... 20. <laughs> you're, 20. Like, you're not a married middle aged woman with a child and your husband's there. And the so. DJ's 40. Yeah. The DJ was younger. I'm okay, trying okay. to really remember who the DJ is. It was someone fairly popular, actually. He was flown in. I, I don't remember the DJ's name. And even if I did, I don't know if I should say his name out loud anyway. Yeah. So we'll move on. What's yours? He's got I don't even question. have one as bad, like, like that. Like, I don't think anything can top that, you know? Like, for me, and all the weddings I've been to, I mean, it's all the typical shit, right? Like, just people being drunk, you know, nothing crazy. Um, I guess like people getting a little too aggressive when you take the groom's shoe. Mm. That 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 kind of sometimes yeah. you know gets gets lost and people end up getting hurt. Yeah, you know where like it's like straight up war. You know like the guy side is here, the girl side is here, and it's like you know you touched his shoe. You get you get clapped, you know. So it's like some shit like that, which it should never get to that point because it's supposed to be a fun and you know funny games. But that's one. And then two, um, I did I did see something. Um, you know, it was it was just like a, a drunk person, and um, they this this was actually at my cousin's engagement in South Carolina. So I hope she don't watch this shit. <laughs> this was at my cousin's engagement in South Carolina a couple years ago, and um, you know, so my brother-in-law, he's like a you know a larger set dude. You know, he does CrossFit things like that. He's not swole for any means. You're not swole, bro. But at the same time, I mean, you know, he's a big dude, and we had like these you know drunk uncles. You know, um, they were they were actually my we uncle. Those drunkles. Drunkles, <laughs> drunkles, right? So um, I have this uncle, you know, who. It's a couple years older than me, but he's like my caca somehow, you know, you know, one of those. So he was pretty drunk too. And he got in an argument with some uncle and then uncle, they starting into a little tussle. Me and my brother-in-law are outside of the venue. Like there's a ballroom. We're right outside of there. Long story short, this uncle is chasing my caca, right? With a broken beer bottle. And literally about to hit oh. him, right? So we're we're seeing this, you know, from a distance. And my brother-in-law, literally, like I'm over here, he's over there. I see him run like a rhino, bro. Like he's literally running like a rhino. Right before he's about to hit him, he goes boom, truck sticks his ass. Uh, you know, so this, and this this uncle's on the floor now, you know. And yeah, that was the rest was history, you know. But um, I'd be fucking terrified if someone came up with a beer bottle. Be yeah, like, I mean, he came like he broke the bottle and it was chasing him. That's you know, and shit you see, the and we're just like, yo, what the what the fuck is going? We don't even know what's going on, but we're gonna protect this guy, you know. So he just stopped him. That's I bet you that guy said something crazy or did something crazy. Yeah, he, probably. There's always two yeah. sides to the story. Hey, I slept with your mom. I'm gonna sleep with Auntie. Let's 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 put it on. Moving on. <laughs> How is it when your parents come with you versus not coming with you to the wedding? Oh, I'm gonna start that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm gonna keep that off since that was your, <laughs> your topic. Um, I think I think it's a big difference for sure. I mean, like I think like when you're 21 to like 25, I think it's it's um, a huge difference. I think it's night and day when you're 21 to like you know 25 range. You know, like when your parents are there, you're like fucking showing up at every event, you're there, you're present, you know, doing Vasudeva, Sutamdeva, you know, like you're, you're, you're doing everything, like you're present in the moment. But when your parents are not there, um, you know, it's a completely different situation, you know, like you're starting to drink earlier, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably, <laughs> most definitely. Probably saw Bobby not sitting through the wedding. Is going and <laughs> you're probably missing the VD a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is something that I, get upset about you know when people miss the vd but um you know that that's what i see you know as a trend um and as you get older obviously like you know you're established you don't really give a fuck if your parents know you drink or not um so I, I just definitely think like them being there is like a respect thing and then the older you get whether 
they're there or not, it's, it's a respect thing because you know they're your parents, mm -hmm. you know, whether they're there or not. So that's my two cents. Yeah, I feel like when you're there with your parents in the beginning, after that 21 to 25 phase, you're 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 so like, oh, this is this is my family's friend. I'm here at my family friend's wedding, like. It, or it's like a family member's wedding and you're there for that reason. So depending on that, that age, you're like, I can't really do much. You're like, I, I can drink at cocktail hour and that's pretty much that's it. it. Yeah. Or, otherwise, or you like, hide in that shit. Or you, like, or you yeah. hide and you go with your cousins and go to like a car bar or something like that and try yeah. to hit up some, some drinks and everything beforehand. But then as you get older, when, when you're with your parents, you're kind of like, like all right, they're you know like at the reception at like ten o'clock they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna peace out. Oh. They're gonna they're gonna fucking peace That's out. That's such a good point, bro. That's such a good point. And, and, yeah. and they're but like, you gower. Like, right. <laughs> like, all right, they're like, all right, they're gone. Like, they're like, they're like, then you look at the DJ, yo. You see, what's the DJ making out with that girl? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> after, ten, after ten p.m., it's gonna hit ratchet hour, and yeah. the parents know this too. They, they know what. That's why they have. leave. Yeah, and they're like low key. That's why they leave. And then I, I like if we're sharing a room together with my parents, but this is before you were married or anything like that. Yeah. You're just like, you guys go ahead. I'll, I'll be back later. Don't worry, I have the key. And then when you get older and you have your own room, they obviously go to their room and you're like, they're like, they're, they tell you. Just don't stay out too late. Yeah. And you're, you're like, well, be late. Oh, this is a fucking wedding. Yeah. I'm gonna stay out till two a.m. if I have yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I think you're right. I mean, it changes the dynamic a little bit. Like, two parts. When you're younger, like, and you're getting sat at the same table as him at the reception, mm -hmm. right? So no longer are you going to have, you might be sitting with other people, so you're just a little bit more cordial versus if you're sitting at a ratchet table and everyone's just like, not going to eat and just drink their <laughs> dinner for the night. <laughs> or like, or, or you might have, or you might be in that weird awkward so stage bad. where you're like, not dating somebody or dating somebody at like yeah. 28, 29, and then they'll be like, oh, and they'll be like, it's like all these questions to you when you're trying to like enjoy your time and it's like, oh man. But like when you're by yourself, you, you do see a lot of weird stuff. There's another story. So I went to a wedding last year in Portugal. Probably second, yeah, probably second best wedding I ever went to. I want to hear about the first. Third best and second best. Best. Uh, <laughs> that one was cool because like, that was most cool because I, it was in Portugal for one and like I didn't know anybody there, like none. You know, it was kind of trippy. Like you're in there and you, and you see brown people, you expect to know somebody or recognize someone. It's like yeah. nobody. And I'm like, me and Bianca didn't know anybody minus her knowing the group, right? Or the bride. It was a Desi wedding. Yeah, it was an anyway. Oh, okay. So then like we're at the reception, like, you know, we were leaving a little bit early so we can go back and stuff. Like, people are dancing. Yeah, I kind of like this whole I situation. Went, <laughs> I, went to the, I went to the bathroom and I see a bunch of like young kids there and I'm like, I don't know if their parents are here or not. Maybe, but they, had, they were like, they, I went to the bathroom and I started leaving and they're like, they, they had like a handful of pills. They're like, you want one? And I'm like, look at these little shorties. I'm like, hell no, I don't want no <laughs> random pills. I don't do hard drugs. And I'm like, I don't know any of you. They must have been like 21 years old. Did they're like, yeah, they were like, oh, it's Adderall. Adderall. I'm, like, I'm like, I'm not doing Adderall. I'm gonna lose my appetite and I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. Like, how am I gonna do that? I don't have a test to take. <laughs> so, so I'm not, I don't have a test to I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't think about it, I was like, hmm, well, is that what that looks like? <laughs> Yo, but I've heard that these kids these days, they'll take their parents' medications, they'll put them in a fucking bowl, they'll mix whatever the shit is, and they'll they'll, they'll put it together so you don't know if it's a fucking ED drug, you don't know, like, Eric's type of What do you, you mean to put it in a bowl? Drug, you don't know if it's like an opioid, like, they'll just mix it together like candy. And they'll do it at weddings? And you'll, and you'll just take one drug, I mean, I guess it's any event. Well, like, they'll yeah. compound it? No, 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 they'll, they'll just like- oh, It'll be like a bowl like this, full of Skittles. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, taste the rainbow. Like yeah. Yeah, and they'll just grab either one no, or two dude. or a hand. If I did drugs, I want to know which drug I'm doing. Yeah, dude, like, I'm not going to take a surprise. It, yeah. You, you're, you're, you could be taking a fucking hypertension med all of a sudden. Be like, <laughs> I don't have diabetes. What am I taking? <laughs> yeah, then you'd be screwed over. And I'm like, that ain't right. Or you can just get a fucking opioid and get. This is coming from the pharmacist. He probably this comes in. Like, this, this pharmacist probably comes home. He's got pills in his like pocket that fell out. <laughs> They're like, Skittles all over the place. Oh no, all my opioids. Oh, no. <laughs> all over the floor. They're probably... <laughs> He's on the floor crawling around. <laughs> He was the guy with the Skittles jar, bro. 100%. Whoa. Like, those people were in Halloween where they're like, they're like, oh, don't give weed to children. I'm like, who the fuck is giving out their weed to children? Who's <laughs> giving their I feel the last thing I give out to kids. You know how expensive that is? Yeah, you know, like, why would they do that? Watch out for your kids. I saw, that, I heard that in the news when I was growing up, and I'm like, watch out for that. I'm like, 
That's not gonna happen. Who was honest? Honest? No, no one's dumb enough to give away their weed. You know, like on, on that topic, like kids, like I mean, these young. I mean, I'm not gonna say kids, right? They're they're over 18, right? 20, 20 to like 24. That's a whole different game. Like we're not in that game anymore. You know, which which is kind of crazy because like you want to think you're young, but when you actually hang out with people that age, yeah. you realize like fuck. I am not that age anymore, you know, <laughs> just naturally. And then just your lingo, just the way you talk, everything, it just doesn't match up, you mm -hmm. know, and the way they move. I mean, they just have so much energy, bro. Mm -hmm. like, like they're fucking mixing 100 pills in a bowl and taking them. Yeah, you know? that, that goes back to the, the like, we're kind of older now. So when we're older and we're there without our parents at the wedding, it's it's like, how late do I want to stay up? Like, yeah. Yeah, do I do I like this person enough to go to their after party? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm going to their Should wedding. I show up? Will the after party <laughs> have yeah, Taco Bell? Bell. Like, I was at the VD, you saw me, right? That's this thing, I was there, I shook your hand. I, sh I made sure you saw me. You know? I'm in the pictures, was, check the fucking pictures. We got pictures. the pictures, yeah. <laughs> I was there at the reception. I was there at the Garba night. Yeah. I was at your wedding, Yeah. you know, but then, how well do you like them? Like you said, right? Like, yeah, do you, if they have Taco Bell at that after party, I'll be there. But, I'm there. Oh, what, what, kind of, what kind of food you got? Yeah, Chalupa's there. coming? Dude, I'm there. I had Taco Bell at my after party. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we were, missed your after party, we were, bro. We had to leave. We had to drive back. Oh, you, you guys missed it. By we, I didn't have to, but I had to because that was my ride. But yeah, I had a fun time. I ordered a shit ton of Taco Bell because I'm like, I don't want pizza. People do pizza all the time. So I want to do Taco Bell for the after party. <laughs> but yeah, you kind of you kind of gauge kind of talk to people who you've met on the dance floor, you've met through the night in the reception. You don't really know them, they're friends of friends. And you're like, hey, uh, you have an after that? party? Or uh, what's the after party about? Like, yeah, do you, what's they having at the after party? And you're like, oh fuck, it's pizza? <laughs> Could I go for pizza? Could I not go for pizza? Did I even eat at the reception or not? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Did I eat there? All was I remember is eating an Adderall. That's all I want. Was that an Adderall? <laughs> was that an Adderall? <laughs> Adderall a bunch of white wine. wine. The Adderall is still hidden in the wine and the and the alcohol and the liquor. It's the most random vape that I took. I was like, yeah, maybe I should go to this after party. <laughs> is that nicotine? I'm sure it was nicotine. I don't know if it was nicotine. How did Zin patch happen to my mouth? <laughs> But yeah, at that point you're like, is it worth it to go to this after party? And you kind of make an executive decision if your significant other is there is like, no, we're gonna go to sleep. We've been here, we've been at multiple events. This we've been here party. for four fucking days. We've been four here days. since Wednesday. We have a flight tomorrow. <laughs> we need to go to sleep. <laughs> if you why did we pick the 8 a.m. flight? <laughs> <laughs> why did we pick the 8 a.m. <laughs> to say that same thing? <laughs> <laughs> you're like an hour we're and a half away from the airport. <laughs> It's like, no, we can do it. Like, you always say, well, we can do it. We can do it. We'll make it. We'll go sleep early. You're there in the witching hour. It's like, I'll just stay up all night tonight. I'll make it to the airport. I'll sleep on the plane. I'll sleep on the plane. I'm fine, fine. You can't do that at this age anymore. That, 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 ooh, I can't do it. Like, I'll try. At that point, you know, you're just like, like, fuck it, I'm gonna go to sleep or I'm gonna stay up because I really, really like you guys. I wouldn't be staying up if I really didn't fucking like you guys. But I'm here at your wedding. I was at every event. I'm here to support you guys. Anywho, next, next question. question. <laughs> Moving on. Hey. Ooh, that's a big paper. This will probably be one of our last ones for today. Yeah, we can run All the right. last one. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, so if you were made a groomsman, are you obligated to reciprocate? <sighs> This is a heavy topic. Heavy, 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 heavy fucking heavy topic. Heavy for the last topic of the year. Me? Yeah. No, because I got married during COVID. Couldn't have any. Yeah, <laughs> Didn't have to do that at all. I guess that was a good part. Yeah. Um, I th honestly, I think so. I think so personally, you know, like if, if I have that feeling towards you, you know, um, to make you a groomsman for me, then I would expect that, you know, right. when it's your turn, when it's your turn, you know? But mm -hmm. um, don't make me dance. I, I guess I would. I would want that. I would hope that. But um, don't expect it, right? Because you should expect shit yeah. from anyone. But um, yeah, there was there were some people. So I want to say this. I I had like nine groomsmen, um, and typically what you obviously in white wedding, non daisy weddings, you don't have that many groomsmen for your wedding, and I kind of regretted that. Like later on, I'm like, should I have made this many people my groomsmen? First of all, they're they're my close friends. I wanted to, but like a few of them didn't do jack shit, and and I'm like, why? Well, the purpose I made you a groomsman is so you can experience an Indian wedding for the fullest, 
This is your only time, maybe your only experience at an Indian wedding. And I want you to make sure every step of the way that you've experienced it to the fullest because you may not have this experience again. And I want you to show the same level of effort and commitment that I showed to you because I consider you a really good friend. But if you don't do anything, you don't show up to like have to shit or anything like that, then what is the What's fucking the point? point? Yeah. yeah. Like I, I value I mean, you. That's why do, I want you to be there. Do, do you think that it was a lack, a lack of knowledge or education that you provided them of what is expected of them? Or do you think it's just who they are as I, individuals? Cause I think it goes both ways. Cause I've, I've seen it. Right. I think it may be like a little bit of a cult, like a lack of knowledge, but it's also the fact that Groomsman in any word, like any term. You know what that means. You know what that fucking means. You know what that means. You know yeah. what the responsibility that comes with it. And if you don't live up to that, you don't even ask about what you're supposed to do or when you're supposed to show up, then that shows the, you know, lack of commitment you have towards that role. And I'm like, like, if, if I'm making your groomsman, I better, da I'm damn sure better be your groomsman at your wedding. Cause otherwise, what the fuck? Like, you're, you're not gonna treat me the same way that I treated you. It's kind of that aspect, but other, other than that, I'm like, well, if I, if I really don't, like if they really don't talk to me after a certain number of years and they don't try to like put that effort out to consistently go to my events, then it's not worth it. I don't care to be their groomsman in the future, you know? I'm about to get a bunch of unfollows from Palmer's <laughs> groom spins. <laughs> Those nine, nine less followers all of a sudden. <laughs> what is it? All his but, <laughs> like, this guy, I hate your podcast, dude. <laughs> but did I fucking lie? <laughs> nah, it's, straight, it's, it's, it's straight facts, bro. You know, I mean, like, you know what you sign up with. Like, if you're if you're getting that, you know, like, and, and like, I don't know if you did this, but like, when you make someone your groomsman, like, you do a little a little whole thing for them, right? Like, you make make it like give them a box or some shit. You yeah. know, like, I mean, you're doing something, right? right? So like, you're going out of your way for them. So at least do the same for you. Yeah, dude. You went in and bought them all outfits. I wouldn't even do that. I'd be like, here's the bill, and, and I pay for here's their the hotel room. Hey, oh, you do. Oh, you pay for their hotel room too. I'm first groomsman. See that's comment, that, comment that's below. That pharmacy. <laughs> yeah, that's that pharmacy but I made sure that they had an, an, like the ultimate experience that they could have, you yeah. know, despite you know budgetary restraints, whatever on my end. But I want to make sure that they experienced an Indian wedding to the fullest. And at the end of the day, isn't that what we kind of want for our guests at that point? Like that's kind of how we were treated at other Indian events. That like, kind of how yeah. we want to be treated and how we want to treat our guests. We want them to have a good ass fucking time. Get fucking wasted. If the bar opens early, get there. Be the first one there. I don't give a shit. I'm paying for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm paying for it. For it. <laughs> Clean yeah, out make the sure, whole fucking Yeah, bar. make sure my money goes to, you know, like it's just worth it. You know? and, if, and if I have to pay whatever on your room because you threw up all over it, all right, that means it's a good night. You don't want to pay incidentals? <laughs> well, you shouldn't be throwing up at the same time. On that, guys, I think we'll leave them all with the closing message. I think uh, overall, everyone understands that uh, brown men and women stop getting divorces because we realize how expensive Indian weddings are. So, with that, Lokish. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment, follow, subscribe below. Um, follow us on all social media and everything. He's Lokish. I'm Ummer. It's bubbling. All right, catch you guys in the next one.